if you need any Xbox or PlayStation codes or any cheap PC games, use the referral link in the description. It will take you over to G2A.com. They already have a discount on most of their goods. And if you use the code CHEZ at checkout, you can get yourself an extra 3% off as well. Hey guys, how's it going? Chez back again and welcome to episode number 32 of the Chelsea career mode here on FIFA 16. As you can see, we've made the decision to put Mohamed Salah on the transfer list and we're also doing the same with Juan Cuadrado. So uh, that was taken thanks to suggestions from your guys in you your guys, you guys in the comment section of the uh, previous few videos and uh, also taking a note from your guys comments in the previous few videos, Gareth Bale has been added to the shortlist as has Neymar from Barcelona. So, taking a lot of uh, advice from uh, your suggestions in the comments, and uh, the, as this video progresses, the situation in the window changes numerous times. So, make sure that you try and keep track of uh, all of the transfer action that happens, and uh, there is a big decision to be made at the end. So, I will need your feedback on that, but obviously make sure you see how the window progresses before we get there. There is a game in there as well, first game of the BPL season against West Ham towards the end of the video also. So, uh, there's a lot going on today, and we'll get straight in. As you can see, we offered there for Sergio Busquets, uh, accepting or not accepting, counter-offering for Lucas Piazza with Leicester. We're trying to get as much money for him as we possibly can, and uh, Rafael Varane was the most well he was he and Mats Hummels were the most popular two choices for centre back so we're going to try and offer for both of them I put inquiries in for everybody and then uh, just to see what how you know unrealistic or how high a figure they'd actually go for each player and uh, to be fair 50 million for uh, Varane and 47 for Hummels it isn't that un unexpected to be completely honest Bale they said wasn't available for any price, so I just threw in a £50 million bid to see what they'd say. And uh, as you can see, so many bids going in right now. Tony Kroos was the other central midfielder we'll be looking at. I'm, at the present moment in time, not overly sure I want a central midfielder, but uh, we're going to throw bids in just in case. Uh, Messi, it was the reception for Messi and Ronaldo was kind of 50 50. So, uh, Ronaldo, I'm just not going to go after at all. And Messi, I will, well, I am putting bids in for, but I'm highly unlikely to try and bring Leo Messi into the club because it was so 50 50. I don't really want to split my audience. So, uh, we're going to, just out of curiosity, because a few of you have said that you were able to get Messi to come, but you had to offer him from ranging from £800,000 a week to £1.3 million pounds a week to get him to accept a contract at Chelsea Football Club so or at whichever football club you were at at the uh, present moment in time so I'm curious to see if we can actually get him to sign a contract and I'm pretty sure even if he does I won't be accepting it but Eden Hazard gets a massive offer in for him here from Barcelona of 52 million although to be fair he is valued at 51 and a half so that's only a roundabout value but obviously I'm going to be rejecting that he's the best player I have at the side right now uh, in the end we're offering a counter bid here to uh, Roma for Asmir Begovic of around about 15 million pounds because obviously they're one of the larger sides in Italy and can probably afford to pay that we get a big offer in for Cesar Aspilicueta as well of 18 million pounds but he's my number one right back so he won't be going anywhere and uh, obviously I really enjoy playing with Dave you guys know that already uh, Leicester seem adamant to only play 4.6 million for Lucas Piazzon so fair enough he can go for 4.6 million they rejected my offer of 80 million Barcelona they want 137 and a half of course for uh, Messi so we offered 95 million to see what they'd say Real Madrid have accepted the 50 million pound bid for Gareth Bale so uh, we are going to offer him 210,000 pounds a week I don't see any problem in holding back with uh, wages you can see that we have a plethora of amount of money available to us so it doesn't matter how much we offer players when it comes to contract because we can always cover that thanks to the players that are going to be leaving us this window they didn't accept the 30 million pound bid for Rafael Varane so we'll try 35 million and we'll see what Real Madrid say Continuing on, we get another bid for Asmir Begovic, although it's, again, well under value. So we're going to counter off a 14 for Sevilla. Obviously, they already have Beto as their number one goalkeeper. So uh, why they would need Begovic, I'm not entirely too sure. But we have a bid rejected for Benzema. We're also, obviously, potentially looking for a striker as well. Karim Benzema, Neymar, perhaps, to play at striker. We've, as you've seen, put in bids 
for Ibrahimovic as well. Luis Suarez was a popular uh, suggestion in the comment section. They haven't, as of yet, put a bid in for him. As you can see, though, confirmation that Papi Di Labodi has been sold to Palermo. And uh, the, uh, the extra money will go into our transfer budget, of course, which will help no end when it comes to uh, getting the amount of players that we need to get in and the amount of money we need to spend. So uh, I'm, 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 I am eventually going to just accept this £12 million pound bid for Roma. They're being very stingy, but I need the money. I, well, I don't need the money, but I want big of it out of the club. So we're accepting that bid. And as you can see, offering Zlatan Ibrahimovic a, a deal here. Although Zlatan, I'm not overly sure about because as you can see, he's already down to 87 rated. So he's clearly starting to decrease in uh, in values or in, uh, in rating. So probably best to steer clear of him but uh, Messi they accepted the offer of 95 million pounds so we offered him 350 grand a week which is in fairness exactly what they offered me so uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens we can you can see here though 40 million plus Juan Quadrado is the offer now trying to get Real Madrid to accept for Karim Benzema Gareth Bale has signed on the dotted line we though are yet to confirm the deal because we want to make sure that we do the right business at the right time and uh, there's still a lot in the pipe work to be decided. Offering £35 million pounds plus Gary, or £30 million, I think, actually, in the end, yeah. Plus Gary Cahill here for Mats Hummels. Obviously, we do want to move Gary out of the club. You can see Real Madrid have finally accepted the offer of £35 million pounds for Rafael Varane. So we're going to, we are going to be offering him a contract now at the club to potentially bring him in at centre-back. He's grown in the first season from 82 to 85, which is very, very good to see. Lucas Piazzon has left us. He's gone to Leicester. We get a bid in here for Kurt Zuma. Obviously, that's going to be rejected. He's going to be my number one starting centre-back alongside either Rafael Varane or Mats Hummels. As you can see, Azmir Begovic has gone as well. Contract offers accepted from Zlatan Ibrahimovic now, as well as Gareth Bale. Like I say, though, probably not going to go for Zlatan due to the fact he's 34. And uh, I didn't realise that prior to uh, getting this far in the, in the season, that his rating had dropped by two already from 89 to uh, to 87. So continuing to stall on those, but uh, accepting one of the other deals, as you can see, Messi's declined his contract. So we're going to offer him, I think, £500,000 a week in the end to see if we can get him to accept a contract. Spoilers, he didn't accept that one either. So we're not going to be going in for Leo Messi. So that will uh, disappoint some, but please some as well at the same time. We are moving on Mohamed Salah, though. Obviously, in real life, he has moved permanently from the club. So it does make sense to try and get him out of the door on a permanent basis. And we're counter-offering £20 million with Marseille there. Still trying to work out a deal with Mats Hummels for a contract but uh, I'm sure we will be able to do uh, exactly that and uh, no worries with that particular one Mario Pasalic is going to go out on loan to Stoke which is obviously the same move that uh, that Marco van Hinkle made last season uh, Marseille have agreed to pay the 20 million pounds for uh, Mohamed Salah so it looks like he'll be going out of the door Madrid continue to reject my offers for Karim Benzema so we're going to hold off on that right now and uh, we will see what happens. I think in the end I offer 53, but not going to chase that too hard until after this West Ham game. So first game of the Barclays Premier League season, and it's against the side that have recently just beaten Chelsea in real life. So uh, not really too keen on West Ham right now, and Stoke for that matter, or at least penalty shootouts against Stoke. But uh, as you can see, starting our strongest 11, Hazard and Willian, either side of Paul Pogba at Cam, Fabregas and Matic holding Diego Costa up top. We're lining up as expected. I was curious to see what sort of lineup West Ham were going to come out with, though, because obviously they've got a lot of new players this year in real life. They're starting Antonio, who, as of yet, IRL, hasn't had a chance in the side, but he gets one here. And then Dimitri Payet is sat behind Enna Valencia up top. So uh, clearly they're going with the, uh, the is he Venezuelan? Ena Valencia, I think he is, isn't he? They haven't actually played him that much in real life this sec uh, second season for him at the club. But uh, he's playing here for West Ham in the second season of this particular career mode. And in the end, it's Mark Noble that gets the final shot on goal, even though it's pretty well wide. That was the first chance of the game. Antonio actually tore me up down that left-hand side to start off that particular highlight. Don't know whether you noticed. But Cesc Fabregas gets it across to Costa here. Costa helps it on its way to Pogba. Going to turn inside 
side and then go for a finesse shot. He takes a deflection off Ogbonna's chest and flies into the top corner. Chelsea 1, West Ham 0. Thank you very much. Just before half-time, though, Eden Hazard has the chance to make it. Two from a free kick, but Mark Noble just glances that off his chest and that is a deflection that goes against us this time. And that one goes wide for a corner. Sesk is in loads of space on the edge of the box. Drill it out to him. Have the shot. 2-0 to Chelsea on the stroke of half-time. Thank you very much, Sesk. Thank you very much, Mr Pogba. We have ourselves a comfortable 2-0 lead now. Pogba trying to force his way in for his second and our set third. Gets it around the corner to Willian. Shot comes in. Good save down low by Adrian. West Ham not going to do the best in uh, clearing it. Obiang fires it across here to uh, Dimitri Payet and his pass is really, really poor. Gets it to Sesk. Sesk with a lash of the right foot and it flies over the top of the bar, unfortunately. Not able to get us a 3-0 lead just yet. West Ham, though, weren't done in an attacking sense. Pedro Obiang gets it out to Enna Valencia. Flicked on. Not the best of head clearances from Cahill. Luckily though, Azpilicueta was in the way when it came to uh, the shot on the edge of the box. Well blocked by the Spaniard. Oscar came on, as you can see, in uh, the cam spot and I actually took Sesk off and dropped Pogba to CDM. Didn't stop him though from racing forward, although unfortunately I wasn't able to put that one into the back of the net and really put the tie to bed. I was really disappointed with myself with that particular effort and uh, obviously that was the most clear-cut chance of the game to this point. Hazard, though, whips in a brilliant cross here and a stunning header from Diego Costa does finally get us that third goal. And we are going to have a 3-0 victory in our first game in the Barclays Premier League this season. Fantastic stuff. Couldn't have asked for a better start to the season. However, here comes a bid for Oscar. Now, we mentioned in pre-season that we were having a real conundrum when it comes to uh, the cam spot with Nathan playing so well. You guys are going to have to make a decision here because Paul Pogba was obviously playing still very well at cam. Do I accept that bid from Atleti for Oscar? We don't necessarily have to sell him, but it would give us... It would simplify things for, uh, you know, choosing a cam spot with Pogba and then Nathan being the rotation player. Let me know in the comment section, do we sell Oscar or do we not? Also in the comment section, do we sign Varane or do we sign Hummels for centre-back? That's a decision you have to make. So Oscar in or out, yes or no. Varane or Mats Hummels, bear in mind Varane is just cash and Mats Hummels is cash plus Gary Cahill in uh, that particular deal. And also, do we bring in Gareth Bale? That one is uh, to be decided upon as well. I'm thinking, yes, sell Oscar. Yes, bring in Bale and go for Raphael Varane. Although, we are wanting to get Gary Cahill out the door and the Hummels deal involves Gary Cahill. So I'm, I'm really unsure, actually, about the centre-back decision. I actually don't have that much of a preference. So... That is down to you. The other two, I have my preferences, but obviously I want to take your guys' feedback into account as well. Obviously, that would mean that Bale would start at right mid, Willian would have his rotation spot, and then we would sell on Quadrado, obviously, and uh, uh, Mohamed Salah seems like he's going to be going to Marseille as well. That would mean that I would probably not go for a striker, have Diego Costa as, Diego Costa as my out-and-out -out number one, and then use Kennedy and Bertrand Traore as my uh, rotation strikers. So effectively, the window would... Uh, we'd make one or two marquee signings with Gareth Bale and or a centre-back, but kind of keep the core of the squad the same, like we were trying to do in the first season with, you know, blooding the youngsters through into the first team and giving them a chance. Players like Nathan, if we sell on Oscar, players like Bertrand Traore and Kennedy, etc. So let me know in the comments section what you think of those transfer decisions and obviously I will act on them uh, for the next couple of episodes. The next episode will be a live com of the, uh, the Monaco Super Cup final. I was going to uh, wait and see what you guys saw or thought or oh, I did wait and see, ugh, I'll start that again, shall I? I did wait and see what you guys thought in the comment section of the previous video, but because these transfers might time out, it's kind of forced my hand to end the episode here. So uh, we will definitely have a live com of the European Super Cup in the next episode, and uh, that will be all for today. So plenty going on right now. I need all of your suggestions uh, in the or feedback in the comment section about the Oscar deal, about the Vran or Matt Hummels, and about the Bale deal as well. And let me know what you think about bringing Bale in and then not not chasing a striker and using Traore and Kennedy as rotation with just having Diego Costa as my main number one striker. That seemed to be the most uh, popular uh, 
uh, theme in the comment section of the previous few videos is saying you don't need a striker just because you've got Diego Costa which is why I'm leaning towards bringing Bale in but uh, let me know your thoughts that's going to bring today's rather longer episode to a close drop the video a like if you enjoyed subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you next time